Hello, my name is Carl Holmgren, and this is number six in my series on casters for my shop tools and equipment, retracting and extendable casters for shop tools. And this one will concern uh, my mechanics tool chest, and it's quite an evolved design. The casters are contained in boxes on each side of the base, which allows for a drawer at the very bottom between the caster containment boxes makes for best use of the space available. The linkage arrangement to extend and retract the caster doesn't allow for a front panel, so on my mechanics tool chest I, I use a handle and a rock shaft which goes through the top cabinet. And when I get where I want the chest, retract the caster. I published a video about a year ago on my tool chest. And you might want to take a look at that, where I show some of the features. In the meantime, let's deal with the casters. And we'll take a look at how the caster system works. Front. The handle operates through a rock shaft and a small arm and a push rod that pushes down to extend the casters. The small arm over centers against the stop to hold it in the down position. And here's the caster assemblies. Three casters per side. Double thickness of 18 millimeter plywood. And an actuating arm which pivots on a half inch dowel nailed into the corner between the side and the floor of the cabinet. The caster mounting boards and the caster assemblies are contained between the sides and an intermediate wall to form a box at each end of the cabinet. The back of the drawers and the floor of the drawers are exactly one inch from the, back, from the inside of the back of the cabinet to make room for this push rod and the linkage. So on the front of the cabinet, got a handle to rotate a rock shaft and a short arm here that acts as a push rod to extend the casters. The rock shaft extends through sort of a pillow block at the back and through a hole in this stiffener at the front. And my handle is simply a file handle that I have attached with a quarter inch high grade steel bolt. The push arm that I came up with for the back end of the rock shaft is just two pieces of steel, one eighth by one inch, that I've attached to the rock shaft with a couple of cotter pins. And through the heads of the cotter pin, I put some bolts attaching the heads of the cotter pin to each of these arms. Now I'm, I'm going to try and improve upon the design of this arm by using a half inch steel rod. So what we're going to do is build a new set of casters for this cabinet. I've rebuilt the caster system for my mechanics tool chest um, and while I've rebuilt it I've prepared some drawings the cabinet the caster mounting boards 
and the handle and rock shaft push rod assembly. I have a complete cut list showing all the materials and their dimensions. And I prepared a set of instructions which basically summarize the 20 minute video that I've done while building it. Three pages of instructions for construction with color pictures. So, and I've prepared a 20 minute video while I've been rebuilding the, the caster systems. Uh, if, if you order the plans, you'll be able to download the drawings, the cut list, the set of instructions, and have access to a 20 minute showing the construction details. And here are some excerpts from my 20 minute video uh, showing what, uh, what kind of content there is in, in it. Here's my tool cabinet upside down with the casters and dividers removed. First thing I put in half inch dowels for the caster mounting boards to pivot on. Half inch dowels glued and nailed into place. The tool cabinet is constructed of 18 millimeter Baltic birch plywood with the bottom shelf or the floor of the cabinets it fitted into dado grooves on each side of the cabinet just five inches from the from the bottom edge of the sides. The reason for making the caster mounting block a double thickness was simply to make it strong enough. With the actuating arm at one end, my earlier attempt at using just one piece of plywood for a caster mounting block didn't work because the plywood would twist enough under weight that the front of the cabinet would sag and touch the floor. So I needed to double the thickness of the caster mounting blocks, yet have it operate within the same height underneath the floor. So I need to cut recesses in the lower caster mounting block for the casters. First of all, you need to mark for the actuating lever and then mark 1 and 9 sixteenths. Okay, finished removing a wedge from one of the caster model boards and I'm just going to check it's even swiveled outwards. It clears and with the board rotated downwards it leaves the ca lifts the cabinet off the floor almost a centimeter, maybe almost half an inch. So now I have to fit the actuator arm to the caster mounting board so that means tapering this end till it matches the slope of the retracted caster mounting board. Here's how I made up the arm on the rear end of the rock shaft. Two steel pieces separated by a wood spacer and I drilled through holes in the front spacer for a couple of number eight screws to go through the wood piece and into drilled and tapped holes in the rear piece to hold it together as a sandwich. And then I ground the, the screws 
flush on the back side because this whole arm and push rod assembly has got to fit into a one inch space at the back of the drawers. That's the end of the excerpts on my 20 minute video on how to build the retracting caster systems for this tool chest. If you're interested in plans, please click on the link below. Go to my website and you can download the uh, drawings, cut list, the instructions with the color pictures, and have access to the unlisted video, the 20 minute unlisted video from which you've just viewed the, ex the excerpts. If you're interested in looking at my original video on this tool chest showing the features of the chest, the drawers, uh, handles, slide out trays, etc. I'll in include a link in the, sh in the text below uh, with the address for the original video on my mechanics tool chest. We will offer plans for all of my retracting caster systems in a package. And that package will include, will include plans on my original retracting caster design, number one, the casters under my jointer and bandsaw. Pedal operated retracting casters. Number two, the retracting caster systems for my table saw. Pedal operated so I can extend the casters and move the saw out to a working position. Release, set the saw down for use. Number four, retracting casters for, for my heavy duty wood lathe. Again, bring the lathe out for use or return it to its storage position. Number four, retracting catches for my workbench. Similar to those under my lathe, one under each end. and I can move the workbench wherever I want it. You crack the casters and it sits solidly on its legs. The workbench caster system leaves the space under the bench available for, in my case, the compressor and the shop vacuum. Number five, the caster systems for my homemade built disc sander. And for my antique model 10 ER shopsmith. I had, I had previously published plans to, for the complete stand for my uh, miter saw and complete plans for a tilt-top tool stand, including the retractor caster systems. And of course, number six in the package is the mechanics tool chest caster system. Now, as I said, if you are interested in a package of all six caster systems, um, please go to my website through the link below and there will be a place to download all six as a package. Thanks for watching. Thanks for forwarding information on my channel and website to other folks. I thank you for subscribing. Thank you.